Uh, but speaking of wokeness uh, and, uh, you know, the battle against wokeness, there does seem to be, and you and I have talked about this before, that there does seem to be, and you particularly with your background in education, uh, there is, uh, the, ultimately it is the parents of the pupils who slowly wake up and see how their children or grandchildren, but their children pri primarily are being indoctrinated and they speak up and they say enough is enough. And we've seen now, we don't know all the full details of this story, but someone who was regarded as one of the wokest uh, headmistresses in Britain at a school, uh, the American school, I think it's called, in London, uh, who's been indoctrinating uh, people, I guess, in the, the, some of the concepts of critical race theory that you mentioned. She suddenly up and resigned and uh, could... Woke ideology and parents be the reason why she's suddenly up and gone, despite having a salary of four hundred thousand pounds. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, I used to work next door in a school next door to the American school. It's always had a good reputation. Uh, it's a very expensive school. You know, Thierry Henry sends his kids there. Lots of professional footballers and celebrities send their kids there. Uh, but what we're seeing is in these schools where the, the head teachers and the, again the misguided, well-intentioned um, metropolitan liberal elites push this critical race theory, they push identity politics into the curriculum in order to feel like they're making a difference. And where, where we're seeing this, we're actually seeing parents stand up. And in this case, I believe it was ethnic minority parents that stood up and said, no, our kids will not be taught that they are oppressed. Our kids are more privileged than most other kids in this country, and quite right too. Um, and they say, we, 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 don't, we don't want this. We don't want you peddling that black and minority ethnic kids are oppressed and victims, and that white kids are somehow oppressors in this country where we have equality under the law and especially in a school where you're paying tens of thousands of pounds to send your kids to every year it's one of the most privileged schools in the country we don't want it and that's what we have parents standing up and we need more of that because education is a parent's role first and foremost school is supplementary to that so we should not let the state take over from a parent's role and indoctrinate kids into a set of values that we don't believe in parents need to stand up say actually these these views that the school is pushing are against the values that I believe, against the values that I want my child to have. I don't want it. Thank you very much. And I'm not in favour of cancelling, but this head teacher has cancelled herself, so it's all good. <laughs> you know, she gets she get paid enough. I'm sure she's saved enough to get on with whatever she wants to do now. A virtue signal elsewhere. Well, you're right, and it is parent power, and I think uh, more and more parents are realising that uh, across the Western world, where they, where they don't really realise, Calvin, how deep this sort of so-called anti-racist uh, teaching goes which is in itself ultimately racist, teaching your kids to be racist, to judge people on the colour of their skin, the complete opposite of what uh, Martin Luther King preached um, correctly. And uh, on the subject of race, just quickly, uh, Calvin, cricket, and uh, we've had this announcement uh, that England will stop play during the Ashes if abuse, racial abuse, uh, from the Australians... Is to, from the crowds, Australian. We're apparently all racists here, according to uh, <laughs> uh, Jack Root or whatever his name is. Uh, so they've said, oh, the Australians are all racists. We'll stop play if there's any racial abuse. What do you make of this story? So, Rowan, I actually, I actually like this one. I think this is a good idea. So rather than <laughs> these idiots taking a knee and saying, you know, um, you know virtue signalling and say, oh, we're, we're going to stamp racism out of sport by, you know, subjugating ourselves in front of each other, that doesn't do anything. We know that. It's a nonsense. But this actually could make a difference. They're saying, you know, if, if we experience racism, we'll stop the game. And I think that's fair enough. That's actually going to uh, take action rather than just appearing to take action. That's what we need more of. If there is, I don't, I don't know if there is any racism in the sport, but if there is, this is a, this is a way to clamp it out say so actually if you guys are racist towards us we won't play simple as and I, I much prefer that than people saying you know you're all racist so we're going to take a, a knee and we're going to uh, virtue signal on everyone's behalf so let's let's see more of this in sport i think i know i know it's controversial for a person like me but if there is something to be done about it do it uh, I, I agree with you there, Calvin, but there's always that slight problem that someone might misunderstand what is yelled out by... Because sledging in cricket and from sports, you know, Australians with our thick Australian accents after a few beers, we might say something which is <laughs> not meant to be anything <laughs> of any cultural point. or ethnic basis whatsoever, but is heard the wrong way, suddenly the game stops and away we go. But we shall see. We shall see.